Hi, this is David. We're back talking about Power Automate, and I'm back on exactly the same workflow that I was working on last time. This one, if you remember correctly, it fired whenever a row was inserted into a Azure SQL table, and uh, it kicked off this workflow that just, there's the trigger, initialized a variable, which concatenated things like the order ID, the um, customer ID and the quantity, and then it created the file in Dropbox with that information, a text file with all that information in it. Um, in fact, I think I want to change this a little bit. The last one I regretted not concatenating .txt on the end of that so that it would actually open up as a text file without me having to download it first. Uh, what I want to do now is add some conditional logic to this. Uh, and so I'm going to add a new step right here, and this is a control step, and we have different types of control like uh, loops and if statements and switch statements. Conditional is what I want. It's an if statement in a, in a programming language. And I say if yes, do this, and if no, do that. So the first thing I want to do is to say what's the condition? What, what am I evaluating? Yes or, yes or uh, true or false? And the condition I want to check is the, uh, the quantity. So I'm going to go into here, well actually, you know what, I don't see it right here. What I need to do is I need to initialize a variable first to grab that quantity. So I'm going to add an action and I'm going to create a variable right here and um, initialize it. I'm going to call it quantity. It'll be an integer and the value will just be that quantity right here. This lists all of the energy values that come out of the step before. That's it. So that just elevates it, makes it available here. So now when I come down to my condition, I can specify the quantity as a variable right here. And I say if the quantity is greater than, I've got a greater than or greater than or equal to, for these purposes, let's just say greater than or equal to 50, then I make a decision. If if it's greater than equal to 50, I am going to, how about create a second file uh, in my Dropbox. Maybe I'd send a message or put it in a special system or maybe change the name of the file, whatever. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do the same thing again that I did here. I'm going to create a file in my uh, OneDrive folder right here, create a file put it in the same folder, my flow stuff folder. Um, the contents will be the same. I'll just have that order text in there. But the name of the file, I'm going to just give it a special name. I'll say concatenate um, big underscore order with the uh, actually you know what I missed a step here let me go back here I need to create let's not do that let's cancel this and come back here and add another variable I should rename this one rename it to say initialize quantity variable and I'm going to also add an action right here variable initialize variable right here and this will be the uh, order ID how about that it will be the integer and the file ID will be the, uh, the, the ID the order the ID of that order let's do that and rename this to say initialize order ID variable and the variable name will of course be order ID right here okay so now when I expand on this condition here and I say create file now in the file name I can specify the file name will be a concatenation of the order ID. Actually, in front of that would be quote big underscore order 
underscore and concatenate that with the order ID and at the end I'm going to concatenate with that with dot txt. So hopefully I've got that all spelled right. It'll tell me if it's not. And that's what I want to do. And just for fun, I'll go over here and do something really similar. And I'll just say, if it's not, if it's less than 50, then I will have a uh, OneDrive here. And I'll create a file. Same sort of thing. Same, same folder. Flow stuff. The name of the file will be... Let's get out of here. The name of the file will be um, a concatenation of small underscore order underscore comma order ID comma dot txt. Okay, right here. And then the contents of the file will be just this order text, the same, the same contents right here. So if it's greater than 50, I want to name the file. The files will be the same, but it's just different names. I'm always going to create one file called order, followed by the order number, and then I'll create a second file, and the name of the file will be different. So let me save this right here. And I can actually test this using data from a previous run. So I, I don't have to insert another row. If I want to really quickly test it, I don't have to switch back over to SQL Server Management Studio here, insert that again. What's probably a simpler, what's often is a simpler thing, is I just want to grab exactly the same thing. The, the, the last one that ran was, uh, I think the order was, actually I forgot what it was. Let me look at that. The quantity was 55, so it was greater than 50. So that should work. Let me run that test right here. And you can see it running. Check, 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 check. It's running this one right here. And now that's all done. And if I actually look at this, we'll notice that under condition, we can see that this one ran. And the reason that this one ran is because it asked because the condition was true. The quantity was greater than 50, 50, it was 55. So that's true, it went to yes, and it created file two. So let's go over here and see if there's a file called big underscore data. So there's order underscore eight, and there's big order underscore eight. They're both in there, and if I click on them, I should see that text that's in there. All right, right here. And just to prove that it's working, what I'll do again is I will test it once more, and instead of using the last run, I'll actually perform the trigger myself. Test it like this. Wait to let it know that it started running. And I think it is right now, so let me go back over here. And now I want to say I want to give it a small order here. I only have same customer, current order date, quantity is five. So let me run this right there. So now order number nine has only five. And if I come back here, I should see it running. These things run really, really fast. Now it's got to create one file. Did that, did the condition. And you can actually open this condition up and see that in this case, the condition was false. Um, in fact, I can open this up here and see some of the output there. Whoa, it's a lot of output. Um, but the condition is false here, and uh, therefore it went down this path and created that file. And let's take a look at that. If I, I don't have to refresh this. It's auto refresh order 9.txt is here, and small underscore order 9.txt is right there. And there is the text within it right there. So this is a simple example, but what I've shown is how you can add conditional logic to a workflow in Microsoft Power Automate. This is David. Thank you for watching.